Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today I'm hiding behind the logarithm sign for some reason. Hmm. What we're going to look at today are these types of questions about logarithms. Basic logarithms where you're given a base number and a larger number afterwards. Logarithms where you're not given a base number. We'll talk about some situations where there's undefined logarithms, and then we'll also speak about some logarithms that have variables in them. We're going to do a lot of questions. There'll be time for practice. Let's get started. First off, this one here would read as log base 9 of 81. What that means is 9 to the power of what gives you 81. When I rewrite this, I usually rewrite it like this, 9 to the power of what gives me 81. And whatever my x value is, that's going to be the solution for the log base 9 of 81. The way I solve these questions is this. I try and set up the equation to be balanced. And I'll try and make the right side of the equation look like the left side of the equation. In this case, I'll start by saying 81. Well, that's 9 to the power of 2. And then, if I have the same base and everything else is the same, I can simply identify my variable x and the number 2 to say x is equal to 2. In other words, 9 to the power of 2 is equal to 81. So I would say the solution for this question is 2, right there. I want you to try practicing one of these. Go ahead and solve this one, log base 2 of 8. In other words, 2 to the power of what is equal to 8. Solve that one. Um, understanding exponents and having a basic knowledge of what those numbers are will definitely help with this. But pause the recording and try that one out. 3, 2, 1, go! Welcome back. If you solve this one, you know that 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. So we can see the variable there, x, is equal to 3. And therefore, our solution is 3. The next type of logarithm that we're going to look at is log base 3 of 1 ninth. In other words, 3 to the power of what gives us 1 ninth? To do this question successfully, we have to understand negative exponents. If you've never seen negative exponents before, that would definitely be something to look into before you move forward with this question. This is how I would set up the question. 3 to the power of what is equal to 1 ninth? And then, I, in the next step, what I would do is set 9 as 3 to the power of 2. That gives me a base of 3 in both questions. And what a negative exponent does is it brings the number from the denominator into the numerator. So if I had 3 to the power of negative 2, that's the same as 1 over 3 to the power of positive 2. And that gives me my x value that is equal to negative 2. So the solution for this logarithm is negative 2. In other words, 3 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 over 9. If you've never worked with negative exponents before, this one here might be a little bit over your head. But if you have and you've balanced equations using negative exponents, this one might seem pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is move along to some undefined logarithms. These are logarithms that don't really have an answer and so are therefore undefined. Two examples that you see there, and I'll show you why each of these are undefined. The first example, log base 2 of 0, basically says 2 to the power of what gives you 0? Well, 2 to the power of 0 would give you 1, and there's no number that you can put into there. 2 to the power of what equals 0? Well, there's nothing you can put in there that will make it equal to 0. So therefore, it's undefined. There's nothing you can do to make 2 to the power of x equal to 0. It's a similar situation with our second example. 4 to the power of x is equal to negative 3. You can't do that. There's no way to give a positive number an exponent that will make it into um, a negative number. If the exponent's negative, it will just become a fraction, right? Negative numbers with exponents can become positive and negative, but a positive number cannot become negative because of the exponent that it has. So this would also be a situation where it is 
undefined. Now we're going to talk about, we're moving fast, logarithms that do not have a base number. For example, it says right here log 1000. What does that mean? When there's no base number written in, that means that it has a base of 10. It's standard notation to just not write that base of 10 in there. So now that we know that, all we have to do is write the 10 in there and solve like we've done before. 10 to the power of what gives us 1,000? I would balance the equations, think of 1,000 um, as 10 to the power of 3. Therefore, my x value is equal to 3, and the solution is 3. And that's the way I would solve this one. Another example of that is if we have this log with the number 1 afterwards. Again, there's no base. It's not log base anything of 1. So we would fill that in as log base 10 of 1 and ask ourselves, 10 to the power of what gives us 1? We talked about this a little bit earlier, that 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So in this case, the base actually didn't even change the, the answer. The solution would always be 0. But that's just something to know that if it's not written in there, that logarithm value would be, the base value, sorry, would be 10. Now let's talk about variables. And we will have some practice with these ones. So if you're getting sick of hearing my voice, don't you worry. It's about to end and you'll get some chances to work on some of those alone. I know there's this, this lesson does cover a lot. When you have a situation like this, the log base x of 27 is equal to 3. With this situation, you have to be told what it's equal to to be able to solve it. Because there has to be one unknown value and the other values you need to know. So what this is saying is x to the power of 3 is equal to 27, and you're asked to find out what is your value for x. To do that, I balance the equations. I always do this. This is something that goes back to pre-algebra and algebra 1, balancing equations. So I look at those and I say, how can I make them balanced? Is something to the power of 3 equal to 27? Well, yeah, 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And now that those two equations look, or the two sides of the equations look the same, in this case, the variables are, or the exponents are the same, the only thing that I have that's different there is my x value and 3. Therefore, x is equal to 3. So I could substitute 3 back into the logarithm and say log base 3 of 27 is equal to 3 or 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 27. There we go. My solution is 3. Now, this one we do have a practice question. I want you to pause the video and try this one out. Log base x of 81 is equal to 4. Try that one out and see what happens. Hey, welcome back. I would set this up as x to the power of 4 is equal to 81. I know 81 can be converted to 3 to the power of 4. And so therefore, I have x being equal to 3 once again and solving. I have a lot of x equals 3 and x equals 2 in this lesson. I know that because if you get much bigger than that, you're going to get into huge numbers when it comes to, to logarithms and exponents. There we go. The last question type that we're going to look at is when you have an x there. So it's a log base 2 of x is equal to 4. And this one is actually one of the easier types. It basically says 2 to the power of 4 is equal to x. And you're just going to evaluate the, the equation. Pretty straightforward. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So 16 is equal to x. Done. Go ahead and practice on this one. I gave you some larger numbers to work with. Ha 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 ha. Go ahead and try that one out. Hey, welcome back. You set it up, 5 to the power of 4 is equal to x, 5 to the power of 4 is 625. There we go for our final practice question of this lesson. I usually give a recap, but I'm just not going to. There was so much that we covered. If you need to look back at it, definitely go back into this video. And if I talk too fast, sorry about that. I wanted to get through lots of examples for logarithms because I found in the past the best way to learn logarithms is to practice, practice, practice. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.